Hey, how you going? This is Ian Harris from Australia here, and today we are going to do a simple ocean with a foreground and a moon in there, okay? So we'll put this on the easel there and get started into the paint colours and brushes we're going to use, okay? We're using titanium white, phthalo blue, black, turquoise, yellow oxide, forest green, and yellow green. The brushes I used in this was my two inch blending brush, my fan brush, hard hog bristled, my little flat scenery brush I use for sceneries, and I used a more flatter, softer fan brush. Also, you're gonna need a sponge and some retarder, and also a cutout for your moon. All right, we've got our white with the retarder in there, and we're just gonna prime this board up in our nice white, ready to mix up some colours to blend our sky and water. Alright, we'll get our phalo blue onto my two inch brush. Now what are we going to do here, the sky? We want a bit of a sky here. I'm pushing it onto the board. Can you see how that's blending into the white already. Just like that, and I want to blend it, so I'll clean that off there a bit, and we'll blend this into the white. So it's got nice, smooth, blendable surface of that blue onto the canvas board. Now grabbing my fan brush, I want to put some plain white titanium white there with no water no retarder in it because i want some mist in the sky about before i put the clouds on okay so i'm just going to sit that onto there like so i've grabbed my two inch blending brush and i want to blend this into that white just to give us some beautiful soft white distance clouds behind the four clouds that I'm going to do in the sky, okay? I want some on this side. I'll wash the brush out. And we'll go on the other side as well. I want some over here maybe. So I'm just pushing it on. That'll do it. And blend this into that blue. These are not clouds, remember, it's just some mist in the sky before our clouds go on, okay? This retarder has allowed all this to blend like this. So I want to keep that behind the clouds. So get my fan brush, jib it on like so. Something that I've got to blend down, okay? Get your blending brush. Find that momentum you got with your blending. and you're actually giving your, your clouds here some of that blue shadow and we'll be able to put another set in front of it. Blend that down to the atmosphere. I always bring mine down to the atmosphere. That's just the way I do my clouds. Okay. Now we'll, we'll put another layer in front of those. Grabbing the white brush on the the paint on the brush again, the fan brush. Stab it on. That's all I want to do. And we'll blend this down. Always bang your brush a bit if it's picking up too much paint, the one you're blending with.
and I'll bring the bottom of that down into the atmosphere. Now we'll put something on the other side there, okay? Blending very softly, banging my brush as I blend. Bring it down to the atmosphere. My ugly head's not in the way I hope. Ooh, big blobby piece of paint, wasn't it? Okay. Twist, dab, hitting it onto the canvas and blend the bottom down into the atmosphere. And we've pretty much got a choppy bunch of clouds in the sky. Okay, now we're going to put our moon in the middle of this, in between that glare. I've dried this. I've got my moon cut out to the size I want. And I want my moon up in the, up here. Away from the clouds a bit, so I'll tape that onto there. I'll get my sponge. I'll wet it, just so it's not so dry and raw. We're going to get white, simple white, onto the sponge, one end of it, and we'll dab our moon on there. That's good enough. Now the other side of the sponge, I'm going to smear some black onto it. We'll get some It'll make some greys with that white. And then we'll get the white again on the other edge of the sponge and we'll just fine tune the edge. So let's have a look at that. That's good enough for our moon. Alrighty, the moon's dry. Now this mist that I put on earlier, I want to bring that in front of the moon. So we're going to get our white paint again, and we'll just lightly put some onto the fan brush, just so we can follow that in, stop, work out your temperaments, what your paint's going to do. And let's blend that in front of the moon. Okay, we've put that moon back in the sky with some mist. Now see these bits of clouds here? I want like the moon to shine on them. So I'm gonna get a bit of white on my fan brush and I wanna just come down and highlight the appropriate parts of those clouds just so it's like it's highlighting the top edges of these folding clouds everywhere. That's all I want to do, okay. All right, I've put the mask and tape on where I want the horizon line to be. Now we're going to get our phalo blue with retarder in it, and we're gonna come down. We're just gonna use a couple of simple colors for the ocean here. So we get our phalo blue to the top of your horizon line so it'll be nice and dark like so and we'll bring that down to nothing there I'll grab my two inch brush I'm just going to load the end of it up with turquoise now this turquoise has a little bit of retarder in it but this turquoise is a real flowy softer paint than the others so I'm going to start from about here and I want to bring that into the blue just so we get a nice transition of the blue into this turquoise. And that'll create our distant depths in the ocean there. Now once I've got it on there, I want to clean this brush and blend it. Let me finish this first. 
this here, I don't want two suddenly hitting that, so that's why I want to blend it. So lightly, I'm lightly just brushing the top of this, just working out how the blending's looking, and I'm getting happy with that. When you're happy, you know you're succeeding. Just twisting it a bit, bringing the blues down into the turquoise, fixing up the uneven tones of the blue as well. Now that is pretty much going to be our water. I want to get a bit of a um, shine for the moon in there. So I'll clean up my fan brush. I'll grab the white. Okay. Now my moon's here, so I'm virtually just going to do a straight line like that into the water. Straight down into the water. That was easy. Now I'm going to clean this brush again. And I'll dry it. And I'm going to hopefully use this brush to get that shimmied across the surface. Let's see if that's going to work. Yeah, that's working for me. It's subtle, but enough to show there's a, a reflection of the moon in the water. That's all I wanted. Nothing over the top and then what you can do is get the white again on your brush and just intensify the very horizon area like so that's it and when we take off the tape we should be quite happy but take it off slow just in case you rip your clouds to buggery And we've got a bit of a reflection. It's probably not perfect, but we get there. I have another fan brush. It's not as coarse as my hog bristle. And the hairs on the end of it are more in a straight line where these ones are more all over the place. All over the place. So I'm gonna load this fan brush with paint, chisel it on the edge there. And we wanna find out where we want our breakers. So. I virtually go from where the dark meets this colour, I might put some sort of breakers in there, just simple like that, just coming across the water. That's enough, don't overdo it. You can get carried away like I'm doing right bloody now and overdo it. Now clean that brush and we'll just bring a few more to the front and then that'll do it. If you can get them really thin, that's nice. That's all we need. Now like I've done before in other videos, see how some of those lines you might not be happy with. Grab your blending brush and blend them into that water. It'll sort of soften them and blur them in, sink them down the surface a bit if you've done it too much. Because the finer you can do these, oh my God, the better they look. All right, we're getting there. I hope you're having fun with me here. So just pause it and catch up as you go along. Now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna dry this. This is a time where you can have a cup of tea, pack, whack that kettle on and have a bicky with your cuppa. And then we'll put the simple foreground on. Now the foreground is gonna be something that I've done in another painting before. I'm getting rolls of paint onto my knife after drying this. And those ones that we blurred in, I'm trying to make these as skinny as possible just to get them on there, just to give it a bit more sharpness. That'll do it. You can see what those thin knives lines done to it. It's just sort of put some crispiness on that water, okay? Now we'll do that simple foreground. With the foreground, I've just loaded up my two inch brush. You can use whatever brush you want. I'm gonna start at the bottom. Moisten your paint so it'll flow across your canvas. If it's too thick and gluggy, it gets hard to paint. And then we've, I've worked out the consistency I want of the paint to flow. I want my horizon, I mean my foreground about this high. So I'm gonna just 
work that up now to there. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight and the edge doesn't have to be razor sharp either because this is going to have scenery on it. Okay, so it might come up to about there. It doesn't even have to be straight. It could sort of go on a curve if you want or you can leave it straight. It's totally up to you. Grab yourself a brush for this path now. Now this is where perspective comes into play here. I've got the yellow oxide. Now there's our horizon line, but see this, you've got virtually another horizon line here because it's going down in the water. Now to keep it in perspective, this path has to be reasonably wide here. If you watch, if I did it like about to, from nothing and then brought it out, let's say that's our path, right? That's out of perspective. And why it's out of perspective, it's like there's the picture and instead of this going to there, you're making it going downhill, if you understand what I mean. So that doesn't look in perspective with the picture. So you need to let's get that wider at this finishing point to keep it in perspective with the actual painting. So our path will probably be about this wide and then we'll come out to the width of it. And that would keep it in perspective to the horizon line, okay? And with this yellow oxide, or yellow ochre, we'll put some white with it as well, just to give it some tone and highlights and whatnot. I'll get it on there first. But I want it sort of crissy crossy like that, okay? Now, I've left these edges zigzaggy for a reason. But before we get onto that, I'm just wiping the brush, grabbing a bit of white. And I wanna, while it's still wet, just sort of get some white on there to give it some tone. Wipe me brush and then blend that in just so it's not a boring yellow ochre. It's got sort of texture in it, different colors. Wipe your brush, reload it again if you have to. Take your time, eh? And then get some highlights up in there at the beginning of that footpath or the walk trail, whatever you want to call it. And then that's it, just to about there, not all the way. Okay, next colour is forest green. I've got that on my little flathead brush. Now, that's dry, this is wet, it'll stick to there. And we're virtually, can you see here, we virtually want to do these sort of shapes going into the path. That's virtually what I'm going for, arches. But I'll show you in a more smaller way. So we, I'll, I'll get the edge, I'll just make sure my head's not in the way. Get some of it on the edge, leaving the blacks. And we want to leave the black between the path and this first layer of colour for the foreground here. Leaving some blacks. And every now and then we'll dribble it onto the path, okay? So that is virtually, get the top, just go over the black a bit. If it's looking too stampy and even, try and uneven it. Okay, that's dried now. I've dried that forest green. Now I'm getting yellow green on my same brush I used for my scenery, because I was happy with that. And we're gonna do the same again, but leaving some of that forest green under there, not doing it too much, okay? This is highlighting that forest green. So you wanna leave some darks in there. Dribble it onto your footpath. And this will create the lay of your land again as well. The more heavier you hit it, the more it's going to bend your brush tip. If you don't want it too bent, you have to keep straightening it as you load your paint up, okay? Well, let's get all this yellow green in. Okay, we're finished with the yellow green. Now I'm going to, with the, the paint, I'm adding a little bit of white just to tone it down a bit. And then we'll highlight this. This has sort of turned it to more of a yellowy colour. Head in the way now. 
See, drying the undercoat side, the undercolour, it stops it from mudding up and blending when you don't want it to. That's a good thing I like about acrylics. I can play with it and dry it as you need it. And we've got, we can clearly see in this foreground scenery here, we can see the blacks, the forest green, the yellow green, and the highlighted bits there, okay? And that's pretty much our grassy bits. I'm gonna do this side a bit different because I'm not quite sure. I like the way I made that one too flat. Now I'll put a bit of, I'm gonna try and kill some of that. Because this is just going to be lightly highlighted with white. Maybe the top of this hill. And the same on this side. All right, we'll leave it at that and finish it off at that. There you go. We've got a simple foreground at the ocean with some beautiful clouds and a favourite moon in there, okay? Please like, share and subscribe to my channel. All the best to all you people out there. Goodbye, good luck. Good on you.